Meet the Avenger, the TBF, a single engine, three place folding mid wing monoplane equipped for use as a torpedo plane, as a horizontal or glide bomber with a capacity of four 500 pound bombs, and as a scout or smoke layer. The TBF is designed to take off from or land on a carrier and can be launched by catapult. When the prop has been pulled through to clear the cylinders, the hand crank is engaged and the starter brought up to half speed. This saves the batteries, which may be run down quickly, particularly in cold weather. After checking prop control in full low pitch, the battery switch is placed in on position and the fuel tank selector valve turned to center main. The electric fuel pump is switched on and fuel pressure brought up to seven to nine pounds per square inch. Next, the starter is energized for 15 seconds. And at the same time, the electric primer is operated for three to five seconds. The throttle is set to one third open and the ignition switch turned to both. Finally, after making sure the propeller is clear, the starter is engaged until the engine runs smoothly. As soon as the engine starts, the mixture control is moved to automatic full rich and the electric fuel pump shut off. Many of the hand-operated installations and controls found on other types of airplanes are electrically operated on the TBF. Their hydraulic system is rather complicated, and a thorough understanding of the arrangement and purpose of all her controls is imperative. Don't throw any electrical loads on the system when the engine is not turning at least 1,400 RPM, fast enough to cut in the generator. The major loads are the turret, the transmitter, and the SBAE gear. One motion of the hydraulic control in the cockpit operates the wings, but they can be a giant guillotine, so remember the ground crew. Be sure that the catwalk is clear. If you have any difficulty locking the T-handle, the hand hydraulic pump will give you additional pressure. Push the handle in and rotate it clockwise to lock. If the wings do not snap fully into the spread position, fold them and spread them again. Be just as careful in operating the bomb doors. Make a signal like this get a reply that all is clear. The normal operating pressure for the hydraulic system is 1,500 pounds to the square inch. If the engine isn't operating, or if there's a failure, set the selector valve and use the hand pump. The hydraulic system also operates the cow flap. the wing flap. And the oil cooler shutter. Adjust your seat to the highest comfortable position. And note that you sit high off the deck. At first, you may find it difficult to judge depth. Visibility, however, is excellent. Before you taxi away from the apron, secure your shoulder harness properly. And fasten your safety belt. To adjust the rudder pedals, put toes on adjustment levers and push the pedals all the way forward. Then with toes under the pedals, bring them back a notch at a time to 
the most comfortable position. Be sure that each pedal has ratcheted past the same number of notches. You can't see your passenger, so make sure he's set before taking off. The second seat cockpit must be kept closed and locked while engine is turning up. A good blast may wreck it. Secure the hood sections and go methodically through the checkoff list. On some early models, you may find a turntable checkoff list like this one. However, on late models, the takeoff and landing checkoff list is on a permanent plate on the right of the instrument panel. Check your fuel tanks first with a selector switch to be sure you have plenty of gas. When flying, make doubly sure that the setting of the switch corresponds with the fuel selection. All three tanks are in the stub wings and are self-sealing. 141 gallons in the main, 80 in the left main, and 80 in the right main. A total of 301 gallons. Without bombs, an extra 270 gallons can be carried in the bomb bay in an auxiliary droppable tank. You want 2,600 RPM for taking off, so push the prop control knob all the way in, full low pitch. There's a vernier control for fine adjustment. Now you're ready to check the two-speed blower for proper functioning. Close the throttle. Move blower control rapidly from low to high. Open throttle until manifold pressure gauge shows 30 inches. Then shift blower control back to low. If a sudden decrease in manifold pressure occurs, it indicates that the supercharger is operating properly. Carburetor air in, direct. Note there is no intermediate position of this air control. Oil cooler flaps open. They're left open all the time, except under conditions of extreme cold. Cow flaps open. For a clean wing takeoff, the elevator tabs are adjusted one notch nose up. But if you're going to crack the flaps, the right adjustment is one notch nose down. We'll make this first takeoff with flaps up. Three notches right on the rudder tab. Aileron tab in neutral. Bomb doors are closed. Hood sections locked open. The TBF taxes very nicely, despite her weight. 13,000 to 15,000 pounds, depending on your load. Taxi and idle at 1,000 RPM to prevent loading up the engine. Use your brakes as necessary to retard speed while taxiing, but don't use them excessively. This is a heavy airplane, and brakes will wear out quickly. Operating limits for your oil pressure are between 75 and 90 pounds. Oil temperature from 60 to 102 degrees centigrade. Fuel pressure, 6 to 7 pounds to the square inch. Cylinder head temperatures can be as high as 248 degrees for 5 minutes at 2600. Normal temperatures vary from 175 to 200 degrees centigrade at cruising speed. and the friction screw on the throttle adjusted for proper tension. Full throttle gives 44 inches and full low pitch, 2,600 RPM. When the pilot is sure he has rated power, he eases off the brakes. 
The takeoff is made with the tail well down, in almost a three-point attitude. So if the tabs are properly adjusted, this airplane will fly itself off. Let's take her off again with a clean wing. Her stick forces are very heavy, but she has an excellent takeoff. The height of your eye makes the ground appear to be moving very slowly until you get used to the cockpit. As soon as he is in the air, the pilot throttles back to 37 inches and governs down to 2400 for the normal rated climb. Before we go upstairs, let's do a takeoff with flaps down. If you're going to crack your flaps, you will trim the airplane the same way, except you'll have one notch nose down. his speed up to about 60 knots, and down come his flaps. They operate very quickly and give an immediate lift. It is not safe to bring up the wing flaps until you have a good margin of speed at an altitude of 300 to 500 feet. them usually results in a serious loss of altitude, particularly when the airplane is heavily loaded. And remember one other point about the flaps. Don't crack them above 120 knots. You'll get a violent nose-up attitude. Lower your speed before you use the flaps and trim your airplane nose down to hold her level. This engine should be operated in the low blower ratio at low altitudes. The governing factor is whether you can get the desired manifold pressure, remembering, of course, to operate within the proper limits. 44 inches at 2600 RPM, 39 to 37 at 2400, and 30 to 26 at 2100. You'll get better gas economy in the low blower. To change over to high blower, have the mixture in full rich. And ease back on the throttle. This is important. Otherwise, you may set up excessive manifold pressure. Shift with positive movement and make any necessary adjustments to obtain the desired power. In a cruising power climb, it won't be necessary to shift until about 13,000, but 6,000 feet is the optimum cruising altitude. At maximum speed, you will burn your normal gas load in one and nine tenths hours, but with extreme care, you can make it last seven hours while carrying a scout load of 13,205 pounds. Familiarize yourself with a fuel consumption chart for this airplane so as to get top performance depending on your mission. Normally, you'll burn around 45 gallons an hour with about 1,300 RPM and manifold adjusted to give you about 125 knots indicated. 65% of rated power, 2,100 with 28 to 30 inches, gives an indicated speed of about 175 knots. Now that we have plenty of altitude, let's study the behavior of the TBF installs. With power on and flaps and wheels up, she'll stall between 65 and 70 knots. The nose comes up and then gets very heavy. She shudders and falls off. 
but she behaves and recovers normally. Without power and with a clean wing, she shows a little tendency to snap into a spin. There she goes. Again, recovery is normal and rapid. Variations in power or speed have little adverse effect on lateral control. Less, in fact, than with most modern airplanes. Landing condition with power on, the TBF has excellent stall characteristics. She is quite stable, and the usual corrections quickly bring normal recovery. In this scene, the wheels and flaps are retracted at a speed of approximately 100 knots. On this airplane, because of an interlocking control system, the operation of lowering the flaps can also extend the landing gear. However, to put only the flaps down, press protruding arm on flap lever and move lever down. This leaves the landing gear in the up position. Unless you have a smooth field, it is best to make a forced landing with wheels up. Less damage will usually result than with wheels down. This also applies to an emergency landing on water. If you make a flaps down touch and go landing, you want to pull your wheels up immediately after becoming airborne. To do this, you must first raise the lock lever just to the left of the landing gear lever, then raise your wheel. Be thoroughly familiar with this installation before flying the airplane. After a flap down takeoff, always get 300 to 500 feet altitude, depending on your load, before retracting your flaps. Here's what happens when the flaps are dumped. You will lose about 200 feet of altitude. The versatile TBF may be used for glide bombing with a 1,600-pound bomb at angles up to 60 degrees. The usual precautions are necessary for glide bombing. Throttle back to around 20 inches to prevent cooling off too fast or torching. Go into the dive at about 90 knots. And trim rudder left as necessary. RPM. All diving must be done in low blower. Normal glide for this plane is between 85 to 90 knots. And if you slow down before you lower the flaps, you won't have an abrupt lift. through your landing checkoff list. The landing approach is made at a speed of 80 to 90 knots. Start slowing down and come across the edge of the field at about 80 knots. Keep the nose down until you're 10 to 15 feet off the mat. Then bring the nose up in a steady, smooth motion like this. Three-point landing always is desirable, but a slightly tailed first landing is better than setting down on your wheels first. It's hard to avoid some bouts because there is a lot of spring in the oleos. Just hold her steady as she makes a three-point landing and runs out. All right, 
Let's try it again and see how she behaves without power. We're coming in again. We've gone through our checkoff list. The approach is perfectly normal. Controls are heavy and a little sloppy, but they're positive. He gets right down close to the ground and sets her down. No bad characteristics at all. A little bounce and he's down. In a field carrier landing, we'll have the signal officer bring him in normally and give him a wave off. stick and rudder forces, this airplane is well designed for service from a carrier deck. For an actual carrier landing, your hook will be down. Tail wheel unlocked and parachute unstrapped. This airplane was not designed for any violent maneuvers not necessary in normal flight situations. Avoid all stunts and other such shenanigans. Familiarize yourself with the position of the cockpit. At first, you'll think you're diving on the field as you make your approach. But she has a relatively short landing run and very little tendency to ground loop. As soon as you've landed, open your cowl flaps, unlock the tail wheel, and retract your wing flaps before you taxi to the line. If you're thoroughly familiar with the electrical and hydraulic systems of the TBF, she'll give you excellent service, whether as a scout, a bomber, or a torpedo airplane. You can depend on the TBF to live up to her name, the Avenger. 